to the victor goes the spoils. And in this case, JB, you are the victor here and you get the coach's interview choice of uh, week six. And I'm not surprised by who it is. In fact, I welcome uh, this choice by you because he is well deserving of a little bit of the spotlight here as is his team. Do the honor, sir. Yeah, well, we've had him on the show in the past, but this is, uh, I guess, the first time we've had him on as the head coach of Hobart College. We've had him on in, in prior iterations of the show and um, back in our more online, uh, I guess, uh, radio version. So for the first time on video, <laughs> we'd like to welcome back the head coach of Hobart College football, Kevin DeWall. Coach, welcome to welcome back to In the Huddle. <laughs> I appreciate you guys having me. Thank you. Go ahead, JB. Coach, you get the first question. Well, Coach, uh, you know we, we we sort of alluded to it in, in the two shot there. Uh, what a roller coaster ride! Um, you know, after sort of some ups and downs in the you know the first part of the season, but to have a a, a win, you're one to know now in the Liberty League over a, a, one of the old rivals, Union College. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Saturday's game and, and kind of the roller coaster ride that you've been on since coming back to Geneva. Well, Saturday was uh, honestly just an overall great team win, and uh, that that was pretty exciting on our end. Just to you think about the, you know, we didn't have lead for probably about ninety percent of that game, but it was just great to see our guys um, stay with it. And we had talked about it. You know, we had we had played too inconsistent the first couple of weeks of the season. We had some some highs and some lows there, but uh, coming off the bye week, I thought we had a good week of preparation. Our staff did a great job getting our our guys prepared for what we were going to see, and then. More importantly, you know, playing a very good uh, Union opponent, they, uh, you know, they got the lead for most of the game. But our guys uh, were pretty resilient, uh, showed great resolve, and fortunately came back at the end and took the lead and, and never relinquished it there in the fourth quarter. So I, I think it, you know all three phases, and and I know, uh, you know, looking at it, watching the video the second time, and the third time through, uh, there was good plays made in all three phases that helped us get that victory. JB uh, was speaking uh, throughout the, uh, the last few days with me about the fact that a lot of guys that uh, he didn't, doesn't even recognize from the roster, per se, play key roles in the game. Yeah. To, you know, we were joking uh, throughout the weekend, too. We saw Mary Harden Baylor has an all-out call for a kicker uh, on campus. I, I don't think it's come to that at Hobart, but obviously you're kind of digging deep to see who's going to show up on your own roster right now. Tell us about some of the guys that uh, you uh, spotlighted, uh, you know, with some prime time on the field on Saturday and what they did for you uh, to really pull out that victory. I think this has been a – it's funny how it came out right now in the Union game, but we've been working on it. The first four weeks of the season were different guys accepting different roles and stepping up and, and uh, you know, a ton on special teams, but especially on offense, defense. As we – you know, we, when we took over the roster uh, in – in March when I was hired, it, there was a change into the guard. There was a lot of, you know, three and four year starters that were graduating or, or guys who had made some impact over the last couple of years who weren't on the roster. So we needed to get production on all three phases in, in different ways. So, um, you know, we're playing a lot more freshmen than, than Hobart typically plays, but that's, that's not a bad thing as long as they can grow and mature. And I think uh, this past weekend, what we saw is after a couple of JV games and a couple weeks of them settling into college, the environment, and just all the different moving parts that happens, I think guys are starting to become a little bit more comfortable in their roles and, you know, a little bit more, I guess, uh, aware of what we're asking them to do on offense and defense. And, and, and hopefully that'll bode well as we get into league play now is more and more guys that can contribute. We don't, you know, unfortunately and, and fortunately, we don't have one or two guys that just define who we're going to be on offense and defense. So it's going to be a collaborative approach. Uh, I think moving out for the rest of the season. So, um, you know, to single out one or two guys would be, you know, I'd be remiss because I'd miss a couple guys. But on, on each side of the ball and each each week it's changing, which isn't a bad thing. As a coach, you'd love to have a little bit more consistency, and, and we're working towards that. But um, if this is the result that we're going to get, we'll, we'll gladly take it. Yeah, and again, I mean, football is a game of adjustments, right, Coach? So, you know, you no start doubt. off on, on, on Saturday – uh, with a healthy Dakota Harvey, which you haven't had the, the pleasure of having since uh, pretty much since the beginning of the season, he struggled with the, with yeah. the hamstring tear. He, uh, re, I think, he reaggravated the injury during the game, and so you know when, when the game started off looking more like 
you know, quote unquote, old school Hobar, a lot more runs, uh, you know, four or five yards of carry here or there, uh, some field position battles. And then all of a sudden, you know, you had a couple of quick scores by Union and you're down 14 to three. Um, what, what was the what was the play call that led to these couple of these screen uh, plays, um, both for Conley and, and Delasanti? It was sort of like every time Union you know, jumped out to a, a two score advantage, you guys came right back. And, and it seemed like in, in lieu of the run, you were able to, to utilize these really talented wide receivers that you have, which I think are, are, are pretty underrated. They're not getting a lot of national attention like they probably they could or should have. But tell us a little bit about how you had to sort of adjust in that first half once you realized that, that maybe you know, the run game may not be there as strong as you, as you would have liked. You know, the, the actual, we kind of made that adjustment coming into preseason. You know, unfortunately, Dakota, who was a very productive running back last year, he's, uh, he's been banged up with injuries even through the spring, um, through preseason. You know, he, I think he started to show what he could do early in the first quarter there, then unfortunately, um, you know, was not able to finish the game. But but that's kind of how our running back's been. I think our running back group is, is solid. You know, I don't think, you know, we've been playing three or four tailbacks consistently. Um, I don't see that probably changing, you know, as long as help permitting the rest of the way. But it really wasn't a change of the game plan. You know, we came in knowing that Union, you know, was a very productive defense. They had not given up, I think, more than 10 points in any game, you know, 2.2 yards per rush was what they were giving up coming into this game, and you know, is, was doing a great job. I mean, they were they were didn't have a they didn't play in a close game, and their defense was playing well. So we knew that that week of preparation that we had to come in with a pretty balanced game plan. Uh, I'd like to think that we always do that we're going to be able to be able to attack teams both in the run and the pass and. We really didn't make any adjustments. You know, I, I'd like to say that if, if Dakota was healthy, he would have gotten some carries, obviously, throughout the rest of that game. But that part of that passing game, fortunately, we already had in. We didn't make any adjustments. We were going to do some of those things, regardless if he was in or not, just to keep defenses on their toes and make them defend every inch of the field if we can. And, you know, Ray's pass, Ray Conley's pass, was actually wasn't a screenplay. That was a downfield ball. But we did have some intermittent, intermittent screenplays that – helped, you know, which was a pretty aggressive defense. You know, they were flowing, so we wanted to kind of get the ball out. And, and um, you know, I thought uh, Ryan Hoffman was, was pretty consistent on getting that to the right playmakers. And, you know, you know Jake, uh, Jake's touchdown, I mean, that was a five- or six-yard completion that he made a guy miss and, and goes for a you know, much distance. So in any situation, we, we're, we're trying to put our playmakers in good positions for them to make plays, and, you know, that's both in the run and the pass. I did think even though we didn't have as big of a production, the run game did help us win that game. And, and that was a lot of buy-in for guys over the bye week. And as you guys know me, I want to run the ball. We're going to get better at it. And uh, it's going oh, to yeah. take a little bit of time. But uh, uh, we did Wait. take a step forward in that direction. Hobart is uh, quarterback you uh, for my uh, days, uh, you and everything else. What's going on here? Uh, don't, don't change things up on me. I can't take it. I'm getting old and my heart can't sure. take all this. Yeah. Coach, uh, let, let's go uh, backward a little bit here in terms of looking back because we, we haven't got a chance to talk to you. Uh, the off season was obviously a roller coaster ride for you. Uh, the Endicott situation, uh, being what it was, Coach McGonigal comes in at that point at Endicott. You eventually do have to play them because it was a remnant on your schedule, and yeah. you uh, your team did not win the game obviously, and it had to be one of those really bittersweet moments because you had to be happy for the players that you had recruited all these years, uh, but at the same time, it, it never feels good. And it, it's gone noticed, uh, especially Saturday's win for you. A friend of ours in the East Region, I'm not going to name names, had texted me. I'm going to quote it. I can't imagine how gratifying it was to get that big league win under his belt uh, with respect to the Union game. Take us through your range of emotions going from the off season to the Endicott game to this past Saturday. Was it the roller coaster ride that we kind of uh, joking, jokingly point to here? Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know if you guys like uh, amusement park rides, but it was one of the more uh, up and down roller coaster rides you can imagine. Um, I try to keep my uh, emotions in check, so you usually never see me too high or too low. But there were some things that happened that most people will never know that, you know, I don't agree with some of the things that transpired. But I do know this, that we we went in there, we changed that culture, uh, we recruited good men. And, and honestly, there this this is the year in particular, uh, as we were playing so many young guys, that I think uh, Endicott should have a great chance to go uh, do great things. And I, I love those kids. I love those players. 
Um, those families that we recruited, they knew the type of people that we were and, and what we were doing there. And, you know, it was uh, last uh, or week four when we lost there. Um, I don't think we played our best, but I tip my hat off to to those guys. Um, you know, we essentially, we recruited and built a team that was supposed to go out and beat Hobart. And that was my plans when I was there. And it came to fruition. Uh, and you know, it's the difference was playing a lot of juniors and seniors or, you know, sophomores with experience. And, and again, uh, I, I love those kids. Uh, they know that. And, um, you know, it showed from a lot of those guys coming up after the game with their families. Um, it wasn't just me, but we, we, we put our heart and souls into turning that place around and, and the culture is in a much better, better situation. So um, I hope those guys, I wish them the best moving forward. Those guys know, and a lot of families have reached out knowing that I'm going to be there for them much after their days playing there. And that's, that's the type of coaching staff that we had there. And that's the type of men that we want to recruit and build. So, how things transpired there, uh, I believe things happened for a reason, and uh, it was in my good fortune that uh, opportunity presented here at Hobart. Um, obviously, being here as a student athlete, 15 years with Coach Craig, we we really built some things here, and I'd like to think that uh, you know, I had a small part of that. And there's a lot of good leadership, a lot of good vision here on campus that that maybe saw that I was going to be a good uh, person to kind of take on the responsibility and, and more importantly the opportunity to take on the leadership after coach Craig had decided to retire and he was he was instrumental I mean coach Hannah I could go through so many people that were a part of this decision but you know obviously coach Hannah had already retired at that point uh, President Vincent was a you know, obviously uh, uh, part of a vision of where we were going to take this program and it, it's been uh, some good transition and, and obviously we're still trying to figure out some interim roles here on the campus but I couldn't be prouder to be back here and, and really to it's an honor to serve as the, the head coach here. And I mean that wholeheartedly that it's, it's we're us serving in this position and, you know, this, the roster is much different than when I was here. And, and I think we got some very good kids here and they've bought in the, you know, even though coach Craig and I were very similar, a lot of ways, we're different personalities. We have different styles. Um, coach Craig was, was great about really making it clear that this was my team now. And he's, I mean, I talked to him day to day, so he's always, I always say that if I can pay this forward and show him that we're running this program the way he's built it, then I know that we're doing things the right way. And um, I think we've assembled a great coaching staff. Uh, we're young as a, as a roster, if you look at just the number of seniors and juniors we have. Um, but that being said, the, they're, they're really buying into it, and it's going to take a little bit of time to get us back to where I think we can be and, and hopefully further than where we were before. But let's take it day by day. Um, the the low of of, of – you know, just bittersweet of losing two weeks ago to a bunch of guys who, I mean, there was a lot of investment on both sides of there, but I mean, I'm the head coach of Hobart. We always want to win every time we take the field, but you know, I, I tip my hat yeah. to those you know, young men in Massachusetts. And at the same time, the focus was never about me on that game. And I made it very clear about our guys that we needed to play better to win that game. And, you know, we got, you know, and it got best or close to it. So to come back mm -hmm. into a bye week and most importantly respond as we get into league play and, and, you know, Union is a very good team. They're four and zero coming into this game, and I think a lot of people probably didn't give us much of a chance. And then that shows the the preparation and resilience of our guys to go in. and And it wasn't like Union lost that. They they played pretty well. They have some very good players. They're well coached. Uh, that was a well played game in, in a lot of ways. And and we were fortunate to make enough plays at the tail end to get a quick, good quality league win. And and really, we talked about get our first one and zero. We got our one and zero. And honestly, that game was behind me as I was walking off the field, and my thoughts were on Rochester. <laughs> Hey, Coach, uh, before JB hey, jumps in, uh, there are rumors all over the internet going on, though. I, I don't know if you've seen these rumors or not, but yeah. Ali Marpet, we know, was in Geneva for the game, and there are th rumors <laughs> that you may have been able to find a way to insert him into the game in the fourth quarter, especially with some of the uh, great offensive line play that we uh, saw. Uh, is there any truth to the rumors that Ali Marpet somehow found another year of eligibility and came onto the field for the fourth quarter? <laughs> I would like to think I'm pretty creative. I thought of every possible way to do that, but unfortunately he was there in moral support and uh, it was great having him back with honestly a handful of, of great alums. Um, Allie, just because his schedule is busy as with Tampa, uh, it just worked out that this was one of the first times he was able to come back and watch Hobart play on his bye. He spoke to the guys on Friday night and I think it just really reinforced what our message was for the whole two weeks about how do we play Hobart football the Hobart way? Um, I think he kind of obviously knew and, and, and had an opportunity that just be back and show 
a lot of these young guys that we're playing not just for this team. We're playing for the 125 years of Hobart football, which is why we always say this is Team 125 right now. That's that's a lot of history. There's a lot of great Hobart men who have worn that jersey that we owe it to them to make sure that we're representing them both effort and attitude-wise the right way. And, and I think long and short of it, we did. So, you know, that's to pay it forward and make sure that Aunt Allie's proud of us and all the other guys. I would have loved to put him out there. I asked if he wanted to wear, you know, number 55 or 74 or whatever jersey number he wanted to. And believe me, I wanted to suit up a couple other guys too. But, uh, no, the rumors are not true. But uh, <laughs> I'd be lying to you if I didn't wish I could have him out there a little bit. We just had a cameo appearance ourselves, I think, uh, behind JB. Did, His son yeah. Declan uh, yeah. just popped in there. That's an amazing yeah. moment. First time in 11 seasons we ever had that happen. So <laughs> go ahead, JB. Yeah, well, uh, you know, we could talk a little more about Ali. We texted a little bit um, you know, during and, and after the game. He, he, he loved being up in Geneva. There's a great uh, interview that he, that he did with Ted Baker, which I think is now um, circling around through some of the, the Hobart alumni. We, we posted it on our um, uh, D3 uh, FB huddle Twitter uh, Twitter account so people can track it down there. And yeah, he did say he, you know, he loved being back on campus. Um, I think Wegmans might have run out of subs because, uh, you know, he's still <laughs> keeping his weight up to play, um, you know, offensive guard for the Buccaneers. But uh, one of the biggest developments of the offseason, uh, you know, since my son just photobombed and, and you know, I talk about being a dad all the time. But probably one of the biggest news was that actually you, Coach, are now a dad to a, a little girl. And um, that's probably the, the, the toughest job you'll ever have. So uh, and I got a text message from you um, at like 3.30 this morning. Were you, were you, you know, giving her a bottle or something? Or are you just getting ready to watch in some Rochester film? Like, what's it like? <laughs> you, you look pretty well rested for a new dad, man. I mean, what the heck? People that know me know sleep sleeps much lower on my priority list and I know I always talk about our guys being helped and all that but uh, honestly people thought like with a baby I'd be sleeping less it's about the same it's just I really think I eat around her eating schedule which helps me a little bit so uh, um, no I was I apologize I was I lose track of some time earlier but yeah I I tend to be a a late uh, late night owl up early and different hours watching some videos so this morning uh, uh, Kaya was actually sleeping at that point but yeah I'm I'm very fortunate uh, Obviously, in all the transition that happened over the last year, part of that, going through that, and I, I really, you know, I owe a lot to Carrie and uh, you know, Kaya. Obviously, was born a little over four months ago, so our two families were have been great and instrumental through that transition. And honestly, the toughest part of the spring was uh, we had the baby back in Massachusetts, so I spent more time on the Mass Pike and New York State Thruway, going back and forth, oh, trying to be a full time coach here and a full time uh, father there, and and. Yeah. It all worked out well. Um, Carrie and Kai are in Geneva as of this uh, the summer, and and things are going very well. So, if that's my hardest job, then then I love it because being a father is something I've always wanted to be, and uh, I've always felt like I've always had a hundred sons every year on my team. Now I have uh, my first girl, so little little Kai is doing great, and uh, Carrie's been fantastic, and really been fortunate with my family being around here. Uh, in addition, my extended families uh, and my coaches were phenomenal over the summer, and. There's just so many good people. I'd be, uh, I wouldn't. This transition wouldn't have gone as smooth if, it, if there wasn't just some great leadership and great people in our lives. So, coach, we're going to make you be a coach again for a second here. You've been watching All Rochester right. film. It sounds like. Tell us about yep. the, the Centennial Cup game, uh, which is a little earlier in the season than uh, I remember yeah. it uh, being. It's usually the last game of the season, about if I remember correctly. So it's shifted. So it's, it normally is the end of the season, so this was a little different. When I took over in March, the schedules were a little different. Um, you know, as you can imagine, in football, you play it out five, six years in advance sometimes. So I think Rochester will work its way back towards the end of the year, uh, like a lot of the other rivalry games. But I think the, the combination of how um, a couple teams leave in the Liberty League and then Ball State coming in and, and Ithaca's rivalry with Cortland, there was a whole lot of reasons why that switched. But we're playing them earlier. Um, obviously, uh, I know Chad very well, um, and he has a couple, you know, just their whole staff. I know their staff well, and um, he is uh, in his first year there doing a lot of the same things, but he's done he's done a great job. So they're going to be prepared. Um, you know, I think that uh, watch them on video, they have some very good players. I think their quarterback has been playing pretty well. Um, you know, and I think they're similar to us. They're playing some younger guys, so I think on any any you know, the inconsistency part on their part is the same thing. We've been inconsistent at times. So I think as you get into this later part of the season, you start to find the team start to, you know, get into a groove with their personnel and play calling and whatnot. But uh, 
we, we quickly put Union behind us. Uh, we know that uh, Rochester is going to come in very excited to play us this, this week, and uh, it's my job to make sure that our guys are focused and ready to go, and I don't think that'll be hard as they know that uh, you know, Rochester is going to come in and have a good game plan again. Well, it'll be an interesting game, I'd say the least. Uh, momentum is a big thing in Division Three football, especially when the conference season just begins. You're 1-0 right now in the conference, so is St. Lawrence, so is RPI right now, and it's anybody's conference when it gets down to it this early in that season. I, I was joking uh, last week with uh, JB that some Union fans were saying how they were 4-0, they were 4-0. I said, no, actually they're really 0-0 zero and zero at that point in time, mm -hmm. and uh, your yeah. win uh, sort of established just what that all meant at the end of the day, because right now Union sits at 0-1 in the conference. You're 1-0, despite what those overall records look like. Think back to 2010 when St. Lawrence did it with 5-5. Five and five. Uh, anything can happen in the Liberty League and often does, so yeah. we'll see yeah. what happens. Frank, had, Kevin and I were actually, we had spoken over the summertime when I was doing the, the Liberty League preview for D3Football.com, and, and uh, you know, since we're, you know, we're getting up there, I got a little, you know, gray, you know, starting to come in. Um, yeah, we were talking about how this year the league could very much be like what we saw about a decade ago in sort of the mid-2000s, where it was kind of a round robin every weekend, and, and you know, you had anywhere from three to four teams that could potentially win the conference, and it just sort of would have yeah. to depend on how things shake out. Um, you know, obviously, you know, RPI uh, gutted out a, a close win at Ithaca uh, yesterday. You guys, you know, it's funny, actually, <laughs> two, two games decided by one point right there. I mean, I know that sure. um, you, uh, you have our loss by a, a couple of touchdowns, but still, I mean, anything can happen. So um, you know, the, the Yellow Jackets are Hobart's yes. oldest rival, and, you know, and, yeah. and it's, it's coming up. And that's like, like James and I were talking about earlier over the summer. I, I had a hunch at that point. Um, you know, we, we played a pretty tough non-conference schedule, and I think some other teams, you know, the, the non-conference, everyone wants to go. And, and I think as a league, as we, you know, continue to make sure the Liberty League is a, you know, out there and the, and the big picture nationally, it's important that we do play some great competition. Um, I knew where we were as a roster coming in that we were going to be much different by the time we got the league play, and I hope – by the time we're at the end of the season, I hope we continue to develop. That's something that we've always wanted to be a staple of our program is you know, improvement. But my hunch was, and I said it back then, I don't know. I mean, it's going to take a very good team to go through our conference undefeated. I really think that there's that much parity. I think the matchups, the how it plays out in terms of home away and off by weeks and it, for whoever wins our conference, if, if you know, and I know right now, you know, we're, we're focused on our next week. We're not we're talking about winning the conference yet, but, I'd be lying to you. That is a goal. And we, when I took this job, that was one of the things I put out there with our guys. I said, we are going to get back to hopefully contending and winning and, and not say that's ever going to be taken for granted, but um, we're not afraid to put it out there that that's a realistic goal for us. But that doesn't mean that doesn't, mean, we don't worry about any other team right now. Our focus is on Hobart first and then Rochester second. And that's, that's our only focus this week. But I think as this league plays out this, this year in particular, I think you're going to find a bunch of close games that are going to come down to who makes a play here or there, a possession one way or the other. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of close games kind of like this played out this past weekend. Ithaca versus Union is going to be basically an elimination game this Saturday, uh, being played almost simultaneous to uh, your game. The one last thing I want to say uh, on a personal note here is while we were uh, razzing each other last week, James and I, about Union versus Hobart, for me, uh, I, I – I, you know, saw the score on Saturday and was really proud of you and what you have been able to do. Uh, you know, we were at Brockport, didn't get to uh, talk much with you uh, th that day. Uh, but, you know, obviously the sting of the Uncut situation was still there for a lot of people. And, uh, you know, they made their choices. We wish them well. And, uh, you know, they're still in the East region. We cover them uh, fervently, uh, as we're supposed to here. But the, the ups and the downs, I, I know, uh, or downs and ups maybe in this uh, case, have to be pretty tough to do, but you've been class every step of the way while you were there, when things happened this summer, after the fact, and now. And uh, we appreciate you joining us to talk about that a little bit, but also to focus now on Hobart football moving forward. Uh, classy through and through, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, I, I appreciate it. I mean, and, and you guys were... What you guys do, uh, and I, I know a lot of people thank you, but it, it's much bigger than just putting out the, these interviews and webcasts and stuff. I think you guys do a great job covering our sport, and you cover a lot of great teams, and, and I appreciate your support through it all. Um, you know, and I think just being able to come on and, and again, be an ambassador, you know, whether 
whether we beat Union or not, I know that we're doing things the right way here, and, and I know that we were doing the right things there. And, again, I said things happen for a reason. But uh, more than anything, I appreciated your guys' support through it all. And there was a bunch of people that saw – know kind of how things were going down and, and I respect anyone's decision and, and at the end of the day we look ourselves in the mirror and we got to look at the man in the mirror and the principal and know that we were doing things the right way and, and for whatever reason they decide not to but uh, long and short of it we're proud of where we're at right here and, and building this thing the right way here at Hobart and uh, I think I got a great nucleus of coaches who believe in, in the same vision great kids and you know what you guys do not just for you know the Liberty League but the entire you know Northeast football and really now nationally you guys do a great job put it out there uh, you're not only good at it but it's a great to, to be such an ambassador for our sport when uh, you know, a lot of times you know our sport is under attack with everything else that's going on with the injuries and concussions and all that to show that there's a lot of great that comes from not just the wins and losses but there's a lot of good coaches there's a lot of good people in division three football in the Liberty league and our and in this area and um, i think you guys do a great job promoting that so thank you on behalf of everyone for doing that Thank you, Coach. Good luck down the stretch. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right.